So I want to make a short video here about circular waves, waves that propagate in two dimensions as circles rather than as sine and cosine waves in one dimension. And think about how do we represent those visually and how do we use uh, those visual representations to help us think about constructive and destructive interference. Uh, so you'll find lots of images like this online and these are really a little hard to interpret. It's not clear what this image is trying to show, so what I want to do is build up this image step by step and see from that what it means. So here we have uh, two wave sources, one in blue, one in red. This is at t equals zero, so they are just about to emit uh, a wave, which we'll see in just a moment here. We're just going to step forward in time slowly and see these waves build up. See how we build up a picture like we had on the last slide. Uh, so here we can see the wave crest from the blue wave and from the red wave. Uh, so as we continue to move forward in time, right here we're a quarter of a period. Step forward in time. Step forward again. We can see the waves propagating outward, and here in dashed lines, I'll be showing the troughs of each wave. So the solid lines are crests from that wave source, the dashed lines are troughs, or minima, from that wave source. So we continue stepping forward in time, seeing these waves propagate outward, and here we have an image like what we started with, just color-coded to make it easier to interpret. Uh, and from this I can see several locations that are constructive interference. Uh, so for example, over here we have a red crest meeting a blue crest. So those waves line up and we get constructive interference. It's also constructive interference here where we have a red trough meeting a blue trough. That's also the waves lining up uh, in phase to produce constructive interference. So we have several constructive interference locations where it's either solid lines meeting solid lines or dashed lines meeting dashed lines. We can also look at locations of destructive interference. And these are locations where a crest, a solid line from one wave, meets a trough, a dashed line, of another wave. So all of our destructive interference locations, we have a solid line meeting a dashed line rather than constructive, which was solid-solid or dashed-dashed. So that's part of how we interpret uh, a diagram like what you find on the internet here. Um, here it helps that the lines are color-coded and that we have solid and dashed lines to help distinguish crests from troughs. But what about, say, these two purple points here that don't line up with any of our crests or troughs? How do we figure out whether those locations are constructive or destructive? Well, for that, I need to propagate this forward in time a bit. So I've stepped time forward a little bit more here, so our waves move away. And now we can see, over on the left, a red crest meeting a blue crest gives us constructive interference. Over on the right, it's a red crest meeting a blue trough for destructive interference. So to find out what was going on at those two locations, I had to propagate my image forward. I had to let those waves spread out a little bit more and see what happens when the waves reach those locations. But there's actually a little bit uh, easier and a little bit more general way to figure out what's happening at these two purple, lo purple locations. And that has to do with measuring lengths. So the first thing that we want to notice uh, is that the distance from a crest to a crest is the wavelength of that wave. So here we're labeling the wavelength of our blue wave. If you sort of eyeball it, you should be able to tell that the wavelength of our red wave here is the same. Our blue and our red waves both have the same wavelength. They're just being emitted from different locations. So what we're going to do now is measure the distance from our blue wave source out to our purple location. So there's one wavelength of distance 
go a little bit further, if we pull up our second measuring stick there, we see that this location is about 1.25 wavelengths from our wave source. Now let's measure from the right. We've got one wavelength, two wavelengths, about two and a quarter wavelengths from our right wave source. And at this point we can see that those distances differ by an integer multiple of the wavelength. Any time that happens, we get constructive interference. So our purple point is exactly one wavelength further from our red wave source than our blue wave source, and that means that that's a location of constructive interference, that those two waves are going to line up when they reach that spot. So even though my diagram, the crests don't pass through C at the moment I've drawn it for, I can still pull out a ruler and measure those distances and determine uh, that that is a location of constructive interference. Doing the same process for the point on the right, we see it's about 1.75 wavelengths from the left source and about 1.25 wavelengths from the right source. So those distances differ by a half integer multiple of the wavelength, and that's going to produce destructive interference. So again, by measuring those distances from the wave source to the location, depending on how much those distances differ, I can determine if that location will be constructive or destructive interference. And in fact, if we go back to this diagram showing all of our locations, all of the constructive interference locations will be locations where the distances differ by zero wavelengths, or one wavelength, or two wavelengths, or three wavelengths. All of the destructive interference locations are locations where the distances differ by half a wavelength, or one and a half wavelengths, or two and a half wavelengths. So if I have coordinates or positions of all of these spots, and I know where our wave sources are, then I can just pull out a ruler and measure the distance from each wave source to that location, and if the distances differ by an integer number of wavelengths, it's constructive interference. If they differ by a half integer multiple, then it's destructive interference.